technically quite uh, cumbersome expression, which is difficult to control. And, uh, and uh, in some problems for gradient fields, uh, similar computations um, 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 for, for, for second moment uh, were recently done. I, I will mention it maybe when discussing the results. But in general, this is much more challenging problem than just calculating expected value. Okay, so let us now really start doing the computation. So uh, I just do what I, what I promised to do. So I separately average uh, delta functional factor and the Jacobian. Uh, I will concentrate uh, for the main part of this lecture and maybe also a big part of the next lecture on uh, showing this uh, type of, or not showing in all detail, but at least main steps of this computation for the total number of points. And then in the end, I will indicate how to deal with the number of stable points. So uh, let us deal with uh, how to deal, how to average delta function. Uh, probably there are delta function in some sense is nice objects. So there are, ve uh, oh, sorry, um, m minus mu x. Minus mu x plus f of x. We need to average this. Uh, okay, I always prefer to average these uh, things using Fourier representation for the delta function. So I will write it i mu then vector and component vector k times x and this is exponential of i k f Oops. f so this is the object which i need to to average but but this is uh, extremely simple since we know that f is uh, gaussian variable uh, so this means that this average is just uh, property of the Gaussian uh, averaging is just that it is equal to minus one half, uh, then basically average of k times f squared, just vari uh, variance. So we need to know uh, the pro uh, covariance properties of uh, various components of f, and one can recover them just from, um, so what one should do just to outline, we have this representation for f, so we are interested uh, in, in the following, we're interested in covariance f i of x, f uh, j of y. Uh, Although we, 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 we um, uh, here for this particular calculation, we need only uh, basically uh, covariance, uh, I mean variance, um, covariance structure at the same point x and y, but for, uh, in order to proceed further and to calculate uh, really covariance structure associated with Jacobian, we need uh, the knowledge of this full co covariance of f. So how one does it? Basically, one, one just takes this definition of, of f, substitutes, uses, uses independence on v and a, and, and uses that our fields are uh, smooth enough so we can uh, interchange um, taking expected expectations and uh, differentiating. So basically, this is, uh, we do it in the following simple way, I mean in standard way. Just differentiate covariances. V of y, and then similarly, plus, ah, okay. I forgot one uh, technical but uh, useful thing. This is, uh, as I showed, quite general decomposition of the field. But in order to ensure um, with, with these definitions, uh, nice and natural large and limit, uh, it's, Advisable, although not necessary, but advisable and convenient to put one over square root of n factor here. It's just because to, to make uh, 
typical covariance of this term uh, comparable with typical covariance of this term in the same normalization. But it's, yes? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so uh, similar term, 1 over n uh, sum over LK uh, just of covariance of, of, of uh, the fields I, L of X, A, J, K of Y. So basically, you need to, to differentiate uh, this uh, covariance kernel, gamma v, and then uh, this, is this is gamma v, uh, gamma v, and this is basically proportional with this, uh, with this uh, delta, uh, delta functional prefactor proportional to gamma a, right? So it's simple exercise in differentiation. Uh, so it really should be done as an exercise. And you find uh, really the full covariance in this way after um, a little bit of algebra. And in particular, you find that at the same point, uh, the covariance structure of the field is, so if taken, if x equal y, uh, okay, if i, j, i, j, then it's really simple structure. The result is minus 2 v squared delta i j um, um, gamma dash v at 0 minus 2 a squared n minus 1 divided by n gamma dash a at zero also times delta function of ij. So delta ij is in fact common factor. So we see that they are very simple uh, covariance structure. Then we immediately, uh, we substitute it here. Uh, and then this Gau the resulting integral is Gaussian. And we calculate uh, very cheaply this averaging. And interestingly, uh, the result is extremely simple, I mean, of this calculation. Uh, you can then forget about this factor and also forget, okay, because of stationarity, in fact, uh, integration, uh, the only dependence on x was in, uh, in this delta functional factor because, uh, because of stationarity, uh, this uh, expected value of Jacobian is independent on x. So one can also perform the integral. And then the, the only uh, factor, important factor, which comes from, from this delta functional calculation and then integration is 1 over mu to n. So we see that the problem uh, of evaluating, okay, this is expected value. Uh, the problem of finding the mean value of uh, number of, of uh, equilibria for our dynamical system is a purely random matrix problem. It's just a problem of finding uh, expected value of the modulus. Modulus is very important modulus of the determinant uh, of uh, random matrix. In fact, of, uh, if you'd like, modulus of, of characteristic polynomial of this random matrix. So it's typical random matrix problem. So we should, uh, next step is to understand what are properties of this random matrix. So what is this random matrix, this Jacobian matrix? And Um, in the remaining time of this lecture, I'll just briefly discuss what is this matrix. And um, really, uh, the assumptions of homogeneity and um, rotational invariance is isotropy uh, will result in a very nice uh, structure of the corresponding 
Jacobian. So, proceeding exactly by the same steps as before. So, calculating, calculating this explicitly for different x and y, and then differentiating once more over the components, we recover really uh, the covariance structure of the Jacobian. So, dFi. Uh, this is a little bit long calculation, so I even do not give it as an exercise, although, uh, I mean, there is nothing special in it. Just differentiate accurately, but long. When you do this, you get um, the following result. Okay. One, I will write it in the following way. 1 plus epsilon n. I will explain what this epsilon stands for. Delta i n delta g m plus um, tau minus epsilon n and then the following combination. Delta j n delta i m plus delta i j delta m n. I think it's correct. Okay, bracket is closed. So this is exact result of this differentiation for any n and uh, epsilon n, where epsilon n is just 1 minus tau divided by n, and tau was given before. Tau is exactly this tau, this parameter tau. Now, uh, we are eventually interested in uh, understanding this dynamical system when degree, uh, number of degrees of freedom, number of uh, equations uh, is big. So n should be considered as big parameter. Then it's clear that this epsilon tends to zero and we will neglect it. We won't consider it any longer. Uh, when this is done, we get that, okay, calling, calling our Jacobian, so Jij is dFi over dxj. This is our Jacobian entries. We see that basically this random matrix Jij is random mean zero Gaussian matrix with the following structure. It, it's equivalent, I mean, uh, it has the same law as the following as the following combination of matrices. Uh, delta ij, where this delta, uh, sorry, this parameter um, xi is just, um, just uh, mean zero variance one real random variable and uh, matrix entries x, x, i, j have the following simple uh, covariance structure. Delta i, n, delta j, m, plus tau, delta j, n, delta i, m. You may ask, um, what is, okay, uh, we have Gaussian matrices, real, uh, real matrices, whose uh, covariance structure of the entries of this matrix have uh, this, this form, plus simple term, which is diagonal and random. So let us write down uh, the joint probability density of entries of uh, this matrix X, and then you immediately recognize a uh, relation to something well known to us. So what is the joint probability density, uh, which can be, of course, easily uh, read uh, from this covariance structure of our matrix X, up to normalization factor, which is, uh, of course, uh, easy to, cal uh, to calculate. Is just minus 1 over 2, 1 minus tau squared, where tau is our parameter trace, 
trace of x x t minus tau x squared. This is this is the joint probability density. So what we can infer from it? And tau is parameter between 0 and 1, which controls this relation between uh, purely gradient and um, um, the divergent last part. So if tau, tau is 0, then we do not have this term. We do not have uh, this factor is 1. And I hope you all recognize the object that we investigated for two lectures. This is exactly the real Geneva ensemble. So for uh, if there is no potential component uh, which ensures a gradient um, descent, so if uh, the, the, the field is uh, purely uh, divergence free, then this corresponds to situation divergence free. Then our x is just Geneva, real Geneva. So we, at least that limit, we already uh, know a lot. And probably we can use this knowledge to calculate uh, our main object of interest, expected value of modulus of the determinant. Although we did not calculate that object directly in our lecture, but I can uh, give some hints or, or even discuss how to do it. However, uh, this is only the limiting case. This is much richer structure behind it. So what second limit? Tau equal 1, which is pure gr uh, gradient, pure gradient. What is this? Uh, Something not very, uh, the first glance, something not, not very pleasant because we clearly have divergence when tau tends to 1. But if one takes into account also a normalization constant, which also depends on tau, then you, uh, it's easy to check that really this limit is very simple. It imposes, this uh, uh, divergence is just nothing else as imposing a constraint, delta functional constraint, that the matrix X becomes symmetric. So it's equal to its transpose. So then we are back uh, to real Gaussian symmetric uh, matrices. Uh, and one can check that it's exactly the same distribution is known as uh, Gaussian orthogonal ensemble. So uh, our Jacobian, uh, at least part of our Jacobian, not the full bit, but the main interesting part of our Jacobian is very simply related for, for purely gradient dynamics. Uh, is uh, simply related to uh, Gaussian orthogonal ensemble, Mat matrices from Gaussian orthogonal ensemble. And now we have the whole life in between. So uh, how much time I have? Five minutes. So let us uh, briefly discuss uh, properties of really this ensemble, which is known, and it will be clear in the moment why it's known uh, by this name, so this, uh, for general tau, for general tau, this is well-known ensemble studied in uh, random matrix theory uh, known as Gaussian uh, real elliptic ensemble. Gaussian, Gaussian is obvious. Uh, real is also, also obvious. Elliptic. Elliptic is less obvious. Ensemble. So uh, why it's elliptic, we will, we will understand at the moment. But uh, the, basically, the new ingredient here is just this term. Since it's trace of x squared, it only depends, on uh, obviously, on eigenvalues of x. So it's really a relatively benign and simple change of measure. And all this uh, machinery that we developed in two lectures can be with due effort extended uh, to this ensemble. And uh, you won't be surprised that uh, really we have a um, uh, very similar structure. In particular, this is, a, again, a Pfaffian ensemble. All um, correlation functions of its eigenvalues will be given by Pfaffians. But uh, I'm most in, mostly interested in 
um, in um, mean density. So I will give you uh, the expression for the mean density of uh, really complex eigenvalues. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you always can check uh, the limit tau equal zero and see that it's, uh, these formulas uh, revert to, uh, to those which we discussed uh, last in the last lecture. So um, density of complex eigenvalues is given by uh, as a function of x and y is given by, in, in fact, expression which uh, is not very much uh, different uh, on the surface from um, the, uh, the, Geneber, the Geneber case. Of course, tau appears naturally uh, in these expressions. So it's not just square root of 2, but square root of 2 divided by tau. But otherwise, structure is the same. And then, here is the kernel, Kn uh, of z, z bar. So exactly the same structure as before. But unfortunately, the kernel itself is more complicated. And this is uh, the, the only difference uh, with Geneva ensemble is just in the fact that this kernel is more complicated. I will give it um, explicitly. And this will be the last bit for this lecture sum from naught to n minus 2. Again, I consider only uh, matrices of, uh, of um, even size. Uh, but new objects uh, come into the game. This size, which I will explain what they mean, this psi. So psi is index j plus 1 of z, psi of j at z, z bar minus psi j uh, of z bar, psi j1 of z. No, uh, probably vice. Uh, this of the, uh, so they, they should, uh, uh, OK, this. OK, D divided by, uh, I hope I, I did it correctly, but I should check. Divided by j factorial, and now the only bit which I should specify, which is still unclear, psi k. What are these psi's? They are, in fact, proportional to Hermit polynomials in, uh, co uh, of complex argument. Uh, times hk of z, where hk, hk of z is precisely Hermit polynomial, which I give in its integral representation, because this is most uh, most handy for, a, for calculation of various asymptotics. z plus or minus i t square root of tau to power k dt. Now, if, if tau is equal to 0, this is the last bit, tau equal to 0, this term uh, is not operative. It just have basically hk then reduced to z to power k. So it's easy to check that this sum then will produce these uh, incomplete gamma functions that appeared before with also some, uh, because of this anti-symmetry of this, uh, with, uh, with some factor which will, uh, will, add, will add to here and we will get back uh, the formulas that we had uh, last time. But otherwise, it's, it's very explicit. And similar formula, more, a little bit more complicated, exists for the density of real eigenvalues. I think I, I'll stop at this point and uh, we'll apply it to the analysis of this modulus of the determinant uh, in, in the next lecture. Thank you. <laughs>